Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Xcode 12.5 beta has been released and after seeing all the excitement on Twitter with everybody being hyped up with this version, I decided to take a look and yeah, there are quite a bunch of things that are super cool. So I decided to make a video similar to the one I did a while ago about a new Xcode release. So let's get started. So I'm gonna skip anything that doesn't really catch my attention. But this one is very interesting. The build system no longer resigns the hosting app target when building up hosted test targets. I think this is gonna be quite significant on speeding up the cycle when like doing DDD, for example. If your app is quite large and you still haven't broken it down in different packages or different modules, I think it's gonna be quite interesting to see the impact that this has on those scenarios. And here it is, one of the most exciting things. Code completion is now more reliable. I think code completion is one of the things that every developer loves and hates at the same time because when it doesn't work, you feel completely lost depending on the API you are trying to access. But it's a super nice way to explore new APIs and of course to remember the ones that you use every day. But being more reliable on this aspect, especially on these scenarios where the expressions contain errors. So the compiler itself shouldn't have to care about it, like it's not well formed, the compiler doesn't have to do anything, but a properly well done compiler and tooling, I think it's super crucial for it to make sense of error states when the syntax tree is not properly defined and it's, a, it's an error on the programmer, yes, but if we can help the programmer get into the proper right state, that's much better. And I'm glad the team is looking at this because this will make a huge impact in everybody's lives. And for example, the examples here are three functions that look very similar, but they differ on the types. And it's very nice that when you start doing test prefix of three, it knows that what you want, it's something that can be prefixed. So that's a member of a string and not an integer. In the same way, if you do test of a two and you click dot, then it subjects both because the compiler doesn't know which one really you want to use. So it basically subjects both functions. And for example, if you use a closure and you access the implicit member here, it actually detects that you are using a closure, so it must be this one. It does what we expect it to do. When there is enough information, it picks the correct one. When there is not, it gives us the proper suggestions. So that's perfect. Like we cannot be asking more than this. This one is super interesting because I don't know exactly which languages were missing. I know Xcode supported a lot of languages and in the application I work on, we have tons of languages that we need to support. So it's very nice to see Apple actually keeping up with all the localization and stuff. So that's super important. And if you're making an app and you're not localizing it, please at least try to localize it to the most common languages. At least give it a chance because we always think in a English centric world, but that's not the case for many of us. Now, this is another one that is one of the huge ones. Now, playgrounds in app projects can now access symbols from the app target. This makes working with apps and playgrounds that let you basically code specific things in a more faster way but still you want to have access to some of the things that you have on the app. Hopefully this makes this workflow much, much better because in the past it's been quite painful, things not working, Xcode doesn't understand really what you wanted to do. And at the end it's very simple. I just want to code in a playground, accessing everything that I can access while I'm working on my application. Of course that's easier said than done, but turns out the Xcode team has finally helped us with this and I'm Hopeful that this improves a lot the cycle times on aspects that we don't, we cannot yet use some of the newer tools like the Swift UI previews and because sometimes you just want to work on, on algorithms and stuff like that. And yes, you can always open a separate playground, but sometimes if you want to actually test things and play with things that are on your app target, it was kind of painful separating that for no reason. So this is an improvement that it's very welcome and I think it's going to improve a lot of things. And Another one about playgrounds that honestly <laughs> was about time because the, the the printout of the arrays and the structs sometimes it was far far from ideal. So hopefully now it's much better. And this is a huge one. This is a huge one. The wording here is a little weird because it says that you can create GIFs, but 
you can create GIFs and videos. You know, like the fact that you can create GIFs is because you create a video and then you can save it as a GIF. So it's it's huge. Other applications that basically focus on this, and of course now those applications like kind of like me like they don't have much sense to exist to be honest. If if the simulator on its own it's capable of doing a good job out of it, which I think it should. There is no reason to not think. And if you combine that with the fact that recently GitHub finally supported uploading videos, then you have a perfect scenario to improve the life of your colleagues when you are working in a team with beautiful PRs that show the video in a video the work you have been you have been doing. So I think this is huge. This is gonna make happy so many teams, and I can wait to try it out. And then we have a lot of new features. As you know, every new Xcode version tries to come up with the most recent version of Swift. And in this case, we have huge improvements in, in terms of incremental compilation is faster. And everything that makes compilation faster in Swift helps a lot in our day to day. So this is a huge improvement that I, I hope it's noticeable. Like a lot of times we see this these improvements in compilation, but in a real project, you don't see much difference because there is a lot of other things going on, of course. But I think this one is promising because the fact that Swift recompiles fewer files in the module, I think this one's, I think it's gonna be pretty noticeable because I'm, a lot of times when I was modifying code and I saw the compilation take too much, I actually thought I've just changed the body of a function. like. Nothing outside this should be affected. So I think this is exactly this scenario, and I hope it actually pans out. Now this is a very nice uh, usage. I like, as you may know, like I love implicit member access, which is basically when the compiler is able to know the type that you you expect. You can just write dot and access a class or a static method or a static property on that type without having to write the type. It basically gives you the syntax that we love about enums, but in any type, as long as it's a static uh, member access. I have a whole video about that, and I think it's pretty. It's a pretty cool usage. So this expands the usages on that, and allows you to start chaining method calls or property accesses, as long as the compilation makes sense at the end, which is way more flexible than it was before. As you can see, you can chain as much as you want and, until, like, if it makes sense in the compiler can understand it, it's gonna work. So this is huge. We have still some improvements with the bridging with Objective-C, which a lot of people may not care about it, but there is a lot of us that still work in mixed code bases, and it's uh, it's something that we need to deal with every single day. So it's huge that they keep improving this and making it safer this interoperation because sometimes it's it's not as ideal as it should. And this is another one that it's it's a small detail, but it's gonna be huge because when you start getting property wrappers that are useful, you realize that there is no reason for not to only have them attached into properties. So I think this is a very good case where the language is already kind of settled and we keep expanding and, and looking for new ways of putting existing features in more places where they make sense. And this is a very niche scenario, but because veridic arguments, you know, it's not something that it's very used especially because they interact weirdly with arrays and stuff like yeah, that. They, they need some work. They need some work. But this is one piece where now it makes sense that if it's clear what your intent is, in this case, you have a variable parameter here, yes, and then you have another here. So they could be confused, but because there is a name on the parameter, a parameter label, and the types are different, like in this case, it makes sense that the compiler accepts this. There is no reason for not to. So like usually this variadic in every language comes with some limitations because the syntax gets complicated very quickly. But I'm glad Swift is now supporting this thing that there is no real reason for it to not support. Now getting at the end of the update, I think this one is very nice because now if your package basically describes a target as an executable target, that allows that target to use this new main keyword that was introduced via, by uh, Swift Evolution a while ago, and now we finally have this available, which is, it's very nice. And finally, testing. I think this introduction is very nice. I really like it. Like we already had uh, XC skip, but that basically skips completely the test. So you don't see it and it doesn't even, it doesn't run it. So if something changes on that test, we, you don't know it. 
you are skipping it. It makes sense. But I think having another option, which is like, no, I expect it to fail, but still run it. You know, that's huge because if sometimes the failure changes, for example, or it stops failing and you're saying, no, I'm expecting it to fail, it means some part of the code base has changed and maybe that part of the code base wasn't supposed to change. The, the impact wasn't supposed to be like this. So it's very nice to have a new option. I'm really liking the recent features that Exit Test is getting. It's getting very, uh, very good as a testing framework and I'm, I'm hoping to get more nice things soon. I think that's it for this Xcode update. Uh, the beta is available already, so let's start using it and reporting issues and, and feedback the Apple developers so we can get fixes sooner rather than later. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.